A lot of people ask me how to invest money in Canada by buying a business and then to apply for PR. And there are multiple schemes available in different provinces and different uh, other places like uh, LMIA, maybe for owner operator or a startup visa. Uh, and a lot of consultants are, are selling and promoting to attract clients. But I want to show you an example of what happened to a typical client. As you can see on the screen, this is on CBC Investigates. Chinese woman seeking Canadian immigration card in shadowy, confusing world of government-supported mega mall. So this is an example of, an, of what went wrong, typically how much money is involved in it. And sometimes when we do not do our own homework, we get duped by shadowy schemes. So let's take a look at what's going on here. So this was posted on November 10th, and you can type this and get this on your own. So this is a, a mall that was being constructed, I think, in somewhere in uh, Regina. Or let's find out where that is. I think somewhere. We'll find out somewhere. Uh, this was uh, being developed by a Chinese builder, and they were trying to build uh, this mall with a purpose of attracting investors from especially from China who wanted to create a, 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 like a wholesale um, you know market for people to sell goods to uh, you know you know wholesale buyers in Canada and for this they were clearly saying that if you invest here if you buy a store here then it will um, you know uh, you know go up to the PR through nomination to SINP so let's take a look a Chinese woman trying to gain PR in Canada through the purchase of a unit wholesale on the outskirts of Regina. This is Regina, caught himself. Da, da, da. Amber Zhang, a 45 year old Chinese national, say in, in 2017, it's been two years, to be persuaded by a global trade ex exhibition center because it was promoted by Saskatchewan government. So this is Amber Zhang. This is the client, I think, who was uh, who's who telling her story. And uh, she planned to store, open a wholesale store, da da da, setting security, which uh, through immigration consultant based in Vancouver, Global Fortune told her would lead to PR, but it never did happen. Zhang also said her consultant told her that she would not even have to live in Saskatchewan or personally run the business. This is wrong. Uh, you have to live with many people. Also, ask me, I mean, how long do I have to live there? Can I just uh, run out after six months or one year? That's it, no. The law says clearly you must show intention of living in that province. So, and the second is when you buy a enterprise, when you buy a business, you have to personally run the business. You cannot outsource it to somebody else. All right. So this is a this is a requirement. But I guess they were not uh, explained earlier. However, arrangement like that is against the rules. So entrepreneurial category of SINP requires applicants to actively run their own business and live in the province. Zhang said her confidence was boosted by Global Fortunes Online, which uh, described a GTX zero risk investment immigration project. Look at this this thing. I think this is one what triggered address. That is government recommended. Zhang said Global Fortunes owner Venda Yang told her because this project is supported by government, it cannot be refused, which is wrong. Uh, Saskatoon lawyer Clark who's worked on it, uh, whole lot is okay. That's fine. Let's look at the money. How much money is being spent here? Uh, on March 17, 2017, Zhang paid Global Fortune eighty thousand dollars. Wow, for the immigration application. And normal, normally, when I, uh, you know, ask clients, you know, my fees is, for example, five thousand, ten thousand, maybe you know, in that range, and say, whoa, that's a lot of fees. And somebody here paid $80,000 for the immigration application for this entrepreneur and prayed Brighton View of 50% deposit on 250,000 unit. Okay, so the unit was $250,000. They paid 50% to get started and then they wanted to buy a store in this, uh, in this mall. So things didn't work out. And uh, contract was, was said if the application was uh, rejected by, by the immigration, she would receive a full refund of a deposit, of course. Uh, application was denied earlier this year. Instead of receiving a refund, Zhang found herself in the web. Blah blah blah. So this is a scam. They said this is a scam. She filed a complaint. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and this is uh, there was an exploratory visit. I think she is visiting all these places here: the capital, the the PC, and Cornwall Center or something. Wholesale immigration ball. According to government of Saskatchewan website, SINP's business focus 
immigration program is designed to attract entrepreneurial talent to the to the province of course so this is a 80000 square foot uh, building at the gds 120 unit that soon will be in da, 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 it has, so it's supposed to be having a lot of chinese made products from beauty supplies to home improvement products to auto parts virtually every store will be run by a chinese national hoping that the business will qualify for the for the canadian pr that's the problem you know these uh, these schemes don't fly and for you know so this was modeled after the successfully wholesale market in China. One of them, Yi Yu, near Shanghai, is built as the largest market of loads. This is a, this is in China. They wanted to make something like this in China, but it never panned out. So this is the example of, as of uh, early October, all about 50 or 120 units were up and running. So I mean, literally about, uh, you know, uh, 70 of the units were were unoccupied. Nobody bought them. So people have stores like this inside, and this is how they were, you know, somebody was selling. Uh, so let's take a look at what's going Everything is a Chinese product here. So Richard Curlin, a, a BC-based immigration lawyer and the editor of Lexpace, a monthly immigration publication, said the whole premise of this mall is flawed. Of course it is. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it tells you, da, 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 da. yeah, I'll tell you this is, this is, uh, this is not, of course this is flawed. Uh, this is the guy actually, the lawyer, and um, this this is all the units inside. I think uh, as we as we just saw, uh, you know, how how many how many were occupied? Only fifty, I think fifty were occupied. The seventy were still still you know vacant. Nobody nobody came nobody came here. So let's take a look at she and the this uh, this woman who actually made a store. Uh, you know, she she was selling something, but nobody nobody bought. Desperately trying to sell her walls to co-op stores. Store manager have told her they're interested, but they can't buy from because the decisions are made from head office. She said, uh, you try to get meetings with the buyers, Walmart Superstore, but not with a language barrier or something. So, um, you know, that's that's what it is. But the brochure, the, the brochure that was prepared by the immigration consultant and other people who were selling this, they said clearly that, you know, uh, the, the, British, the SINP government was a strong supporter of GTEC. You know that's why how a lot of Chinese people thought this is a government partnered program, and then that's how they and they came in. All right. So uh, on an article which was in February 2017 on China-based finance website said GTEC is an immigration project managed by the Saskatchewan government. It provides a fast and efficient. No, this is all misleading, and you know you can see the result. What's going on? So this is these are the, all these people. I think this is the owner in the middle here, and other people are just maybe. Uh, on board, uh, they're trying to sell, you know, trying to construct the building and then, of course, sell to bring in Chinese investors. So, government support persuaded Zhang to buy in. This is all BS, all right. So, all these people are, I think, they were working in this company. Uh, and you can see, you know, they look like respectful photographs, but, you know, immigration is a totally different matter. Zhang t was told she would not have to run our business. This is something what I want to talk about. Uh, Zhang was persuaded by Global Fortune sales page. The company told her Saskatchewan is the easiest place in Canada to get PR. In a message to Zhang on WeChat, Global Fortune rep Kathy Hugh described immigration program. Basically, there's no requirement, very low hole. And this is all misleading. Uh, many people think that, you know, once we throw in the money, whatever money they're bringing in, that's it. And their immigration is set. It doesn't happen that way. You know, consultants make a lot of commission by selling real estate and you know by immigration application but there's absolutely no guarantee that the application will be will be approved so be very careful all right all right let's take a look and this is all on chinese messages on their website they're trying to bring in investors and um, you know that's it so in early 2000 kathy Hu for global fortune told zhang on wechat that she would not have to run her own business all this is wrong but of course this how can that that be i mean that is that is wrong uh, so let's take a look the the company the immigration company and other other people i think there were some other maybe business planners uh Elrond's consulting was founded by zion Bai, who's leading richard and that's all it is hr website development market research strategy planning supply due to support exposed solutions and we got all the kinds of information here and sales with different reality so so nothing nothing really happened um when she arrived at the GTA on an exploratory visit, I found the place was very desolate. There's nobody there. My first reaction was the company promoter is quite different from the reality. And for years, GTEC has, has used an inaccurate rendering of GTH 
showing a jam-packed high-tech facility, which is, of course, you know, damn, you know. I mean, this this is a mall. I mean, you see all the places are still still unoccupied land. You know, there's there's nothing going on here. So, so that's that's what it is. Zhang's application was declined. Uh, Bright Advantage paid a large accounting firm to develop a business plan for Zhang Security. It says central. It says Zhang will invest. $560,000 in projects by year two, Zhang business will earn a $27,000 profit, which is pretty much nothing. I mean, it's not very high after investing all this money. It's hardly, whatever this, maybe 5%. So this should have been, never been approved by the province. So all of this, you know, you, you, you can go to this article and read this on your own, no active management. Um, the Zhang did not, uh, you know, do active management also of the business. It's a part of the program, but they, but they, I guess they ignored it. So uh, this, I think, this is the owner in between, in in the middle here. Um, uh, this is this is the minister left at uh, attending the ribbon cutting ceremony, and uh, VP of Government Relations, Lon uh, Nystrom, is right here on the on the thing. Zain was denied a refund. Zain's contract right now. She's entitled to full refund. <clears throat> but I guess I don't think the refund is coming anytime soon, or maybe not much. He urged her to reapply, saying, "Bright will provide the with the company that will help her to the imply may not be may not be entitled for a refund." All right. So, hey, I uh, just wanted you to take a look. Uh, and this is a invoice given to uh, them to the to the client, and this has the address, everything else. So let's see. BEP fee, which is I think business exploratory, uh, you know, program, which is six thousand legal fee. The spelling of legal is wrong here. L E G A L. I'm sure. I'm sure. Five thousand twenty five hundred S I N P fee and other fees. So we got some fees uh, structure here. Lawyer confusion. Everything is right here. So I the reason the reason I oh look at this. In the midst of Zhang's fight for refund, Brighton uh, views lawyers Tony Bachelet wrote a letter CBC is being used as a pawn in a contract dispute. Investors trying to use the RCBC to get the contractual obligation, trying to use the CBC to pressure Brighton view as a private business and avoid what amounts to the responsibility and standard commercial negotiation procedures. Not something the CBC should permit, Bachelet wrote. So there's some art, there's some lawyers involved here to get this money collected, whatever money is uh, is is pending. Yet days later, as Zhang continued to push for a different merchant, wrote another email to CBCMC and Dan. All right. So everything is everything is right here. And the name of the journalist, uh, Jaff Leo, also, you know, is right here. So you can read this. The The reason I'm I'm showing you all, all this is because this is an exhaustive uh, report on, on CBC. And uh, I think it is worthwhile to understand... Uh, all those immigration sp schemes of the entrepreneurial schemes and investor schemes are, are you know, promoted by overzealous consultants, especially who want to make a quick buck. Unless you do your homework, you know, you will likely get burned. So be very careful and, uh, you know, uh, always, always do your homework. All right. Thank you very much. Type this, you know, copy this. Copy this on Google, and it's posted on CBC News on November 10. All right, so I'm just reporting from here. So I'm just letting you know. I, I'm not making my own uh, analysis of uh, what really went wrong legally, but there's there's lot to digest here. But you know, something people definitely who are applying for entrepreneur application, you should take a look and then you know learn learn from the mistakes. Thank you.